Right now, it looks like the fanboys are bending over backwards to try and pretend that Shift Up is not responsible for what happened with Stellar Blade, that it's entirely Sony's fault, that the the Koreans didn't want to bend over and take it from the SJWs, but they had to because Sony just has so much control over them. This was a, a tale as old as time, something we've been seeing, honestly, since the 90s, right? The image that PlayStation is like the hardcore mature game for mature gamers is not, never has been true. And I've talked about this, like, for years and years. And one of the things that's becoming very, very apparent to me, honestly, is that this idea that censorship is the most critical aspect of video game design. You know, the thing that we should be most concerned about, uh, the thing that we should boycott, boycott products over. To me, this is a complete non-issue. If anything, like, I would want uh, companies to censor gay shit for the West. You know, like, I would have no problem with censorship when it comes to certain topics right like i i have no problem with that and i have no problem with uh with sony or shift up you know censoring stellar blade because i think the reaction to this you know the reaction to this change really em uh, indicates just where everyone's interest in this game was coming from right it had nothing to do with the character it had nothing to do with the design with the design it had nothing to do with the game itself right it was entirely based on this premise that this game was going to stick it to the sjw's which is of course ridiculous because you know the sjw's don't have any real control over the gaming industry i've been talking about this for a long time but there's there's very strong like belief that they do and that they're the reason games have been getting worse you know not the fact that uh game companies have been sabotaging and undermining their talent for generations no no like, it's entirely because of Western political movements, right? <laughs> People who don't even work on the game, you know, community managers, you know, executives, like, those people are ruining video games for us. And to a certain extent, that is true, because these are the people pushing for uh, microtransactions, you know, DLC, season passes, battle passes, uh, like, endless sequels to rehash tired properties, right? The the, the never-ending support for PlayStation while throwing scraps at Nintendo consoles, right? Like, there are problems with the modern gaming space, right? But it really does feel like, outside of this specific channel, nobody talks about any of it. Because all anybody wants to do is continue this facade that, that, oh, man, things were better back in the day. Oh, man, things were so much better back in the 90s or whatever. And that really isn't true. You know, this is becoming more and more apparent to me as I play, like, all-time classics like Final Fantasy VI and... Um, you know, other games, right? You know, I, I love old games. You know, I love retro stuff. I love the classics, right? But there is no denying that there has been major steps steps forward in those uh, in, in, in the industry from the good developers. Now, the issue with that is, and it always has been, that the gaming industry at large, you know, the gaming community at large, does not want to admit who the, the good developers are right? Because they are almost always Nintendo affiliated, right? You have the Nintendos, you have the good feels, the, uh, the monolith softs, the next level games, you know, the retro studios, like nobody wants to acknowledge that these companies are just killing it right now, producing nothing but banger after banger, uh, hit after hit year after year, while everyone else hasn't gotten anything good since like the mid two thousands at the absolute latest, you know, like the difference in quality between Monolith Soft and Bethesda at this point is laughable, right? The idea that Bethesda was on top of their game and was like some major RPG studio, it it never really held up, right? Normies flocked to Skyrim because they wanted their generic fantasy open world RPG, but the reality is none of them turned out for anything else that Bethesda has ever produced, right? It was shocking to me how many people, you know, came out in support of the Fallout show you know, oh, this is the best video game adaption I've ever seen. Oh, but I've never played the game. Uh, it's very typical 
for modern gamers, I think, to not really know anything about what's actually out there, what they can support, what they can buy, what they can play, right? What's actually good. And this is why we keep running into this issue. Every generation, people don't want to admit that these companies that align with PlayStation are completely are complete trash, right? You know, this, uh, Stellar Blade failing at release uh, did not surprise me at all. It was so evident to me that I didn't even really bother pointing it out, right? I, I knew this was going to happen. I was uh, looking forward to it because, yeah, you brought this on yourself. Uh, congratulations. You played yourself, I could, uh, you could say. Like, the reality is there was no... Stellar Blade is not all that impressive. You know, like this isn't anything unique or interesting. You know, Bayonetta 3, Astral Chain, Bayonetta 2, right? Like, uh, what does Stellar Blade do differently than those games? Better than those games, honestly. You know, like the game that people uh, love to compare Stellar Blade to, Nier Automata, like, I, I don't even see Stellar Blade being better than that, honestly. Not that, like, Nier Automata is good, right? But. It's the same kind of overlap, right? The same kind of mindset, the same kind of like obsessive need for like coom material in your video games, right? Like there's nothing really of value to Nier Automata or Stellar Blade, but because they have attractive females attached to them, right? You, uh, well, alleged female in 2B's case, like because you have these things shoved in your face that are that are uh, that are like coom friendly like you you see a lot of people come out and try to say that like uh, this is going to be the game of the year oh man i uh we love female characters in games oh as long as they're tiltillating and attractive uh like a again it is downright pathetic seeing seeing these people behave the way they do it uh it really needs to stop and i do hope stellar blade is the beginning of the end of this kind of mindset because I do genuinely think that this backlash from game journalists regarding the character design and, like, uh, um, the appeal of the character, like, I do think that was very much manufactured, right? Like, because I've never – it's interesting when you see this happen, like, uh, comparing this to how, like, the typical Nintendo game is treated, right? You know, Princess Peach Showtime came and went, and – uh Although people tried to manufacture controversy around it, it, it just didn't happen, right? To me, it just feels as if Nintendo fans are more mature, uh, we're more sophisticated, we're more cultured, and so, like, we don't necessarily fall for any of these, like, blatant attempts at trying to, like, get a rise out of us, right? You know, Princess Peach Showtime, I think, has proven itself to be the better game to, uh, compared to uh, the Stellar Blade, and... Princess Peach is very much a way stronger, more interesting, more memorable female video game character.